Hey everybody, this is Dr. Adam Christman, Chief Veterinary Officer at DVM360, MJH Life Sciences. And I have another awesome guest with me, guys. I keep bringing it every time. So I have third year veterinary student from Tufts University, Harris Fitzgerald. How are you, Harris? I'm doing well, how are you? You know, as well as we probably can be, you know, I feel like I'm in an aquarium. Right, oh, for sure. <laughs> So um, share with everyone a little bit about your experience as a veterinary student with what's going on, because it's, it's a different perspective that I'm sure many out there can relate to with what's going on with COVID. Yeah, so I would love to. Um, so as a third year, um, specifically at Tufts, um, we spend about until February or March in classes. And then March, we have our white coat ceremony. Um, where all of our family can come um, and friends and significant others and watch us receive our white coats. Then we go on spring break for a week and then we return to start clinics. Um, and so unfortunately this pandemic started in the US around that exact time. Oh. Um, and so our white coat was changed um, to on campus and only students were allowed to attend, which I think was a very, very rest, uh, rational, reasonable um, response, very responsible. Um, it was unfortunate that our families and the people who support us couldn't physically be there, no. but they could watch on a link. Um, and then we went home for spring break or did whatever we wanted for spring break. But now our uh, hospital um, changed its policy that only essential personnel, um, mainly the ER, um, was open and was able to uh, receive patients. Um, and now they're doing something along the lines of curbside um, type of uh, uh, relationship um, so that it limits the number of people going into the clinic, which means that all the students on rotation um, haven't been able to be there in person. Right. So um, it's pretty unfortunate because everyone, you know, really hypes you up for uh, starting rotations in person, yeah. you know, saying like, oh, you're going to be able to apply what you've learned and um, right. do it in, uh, in person. And so this is kind of like going back to a type of learning style, problem-based learning, where we're just talking about cases and what we would do. Um, which is great because it allows you to talk about the theory of the medicine you're practicing, but it's unfortunate because you can't actually practice the medicine and talking about the theory can only go so far. Um, but what's really hard for me personally with this is that I don't have anything to compare it to. Like I don't have any previous clinical experience as a fourth year student, so to speak, you know, as like that practicing clinician right. as much as a fourth year student or late third year student is concerned. Um, and so this right now is my normal for rotations, um, which makes it very peculiar. What rotation are you on right now then? So right now I'm on our, um, so to speak, fan favorite um, community medicine rotation. Oh, that is a um, fan favorite. Yeah, and people really like it because you are able to act as the clinician, obviously yeah. with, with oversight. Um, of course but um, you really act as the sole clinician. You get to interact with the clients, you get to interact with the patients, you really get to direct what um, is going to be happening throughout the uh, meeting or throughout the procedure, throughout um, uh, the whole uh, time that they're there. Right. And so that is such an important part that I am missing, unfortunately, um, because I'm not seeing new cases, obviously. And so we're just talking about cases that have come up, which is great. We talked about like heartworm disease. We talked about pros and cons of spaying and neutering, which is all really great to talk about because there's way more than just the black and white. Yes, you should spay and neuter or yes, everyone should be on heartworm preventive. You know, like there's a lot right. of grayscale in there. Um, so it's really nice to talk about the theory of really understanding why you're saying like everyone cats included like should be on heartworm preventative you know but yeah. it's it's really hard to really get that practice of of encouraging that to clients when you can't do that there's only so much especially in veterinary school there's only so much that you can learn in the in the classroom and you know a majority of it is didactic where you need to learn right. hands-on and have a mistake here and there and you have the oversight where somebody's watching you so that's what makes it tough for for what you're going through right now right. but you know it sounds like they have a, a good plan in place for the time being of course and many practices by the way are doing exactly what you're talking about with that concierge drop off or curbside drop off and it's going well overall but it's just you know what has to be done for the time being um, 
And so tell me a little bit. I know you're from Northern Virginia. Yes. And so, and where is Tufts located? And so those that may not know. So, so Tufts is located, um, the vet school is located about 35 miles west of Boston. So mm -hmm. it's like the very edge of the greater Boston area up in Massachusetts. Um, but I am in Northern Virginia um, because that's where I'm from. And I went home for spring break. Um, so that's about, I think like 400 miles away. Um, it's several states south of, sure. of school. So what's the plan for the summertime? That's a really great question. Um, our school has been really good about being open with the students and kind of saying, this is what we're thinking. What is your feedback? This is what we're doing. What is your feedback? Like we've been having Zoom meetings with um, our uh, dean and uh, the assistant dean or, and the dean of academic affairs. Um, so they've been really open about it. But to be frank, no one's really sure. Yeah. Um, it, okay. You know, we're playing a really long game of playing it by ear. Right. Yes. So are we on our end too with everything else? Right. It's, oh, yeah. It's crazy. Um, and those of you that are watching too, I want to just shed some in, in, insight on Harris here because you got some great content that you've written some blogs <laughs> on. You've been um, featured on other websites about your information. And Thank you. Know, you. And you, you write very well, by the way. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And one thing that really resonated with me is how, what you like to do for fun outside of, uh, of vet school because it's so important. So share with us a little bit about what you like to do. Yeah, so um, I, I really like working out. It's a way to, for me to de-stress. I also really like um, going dancing with friends. Um, and what kind of dancing, by the way? What kind of dancing? <laughs> it's, um, um, uh, I guess, freestyle. Why not? You know, I'm not yeah. trained in anything. So right. I guess freestyle is the best way to uh, yeah, yeah. describe it. <laughs> yeah. um, definitely looks like freestyle. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, something that I'm very into that I've been very passionate about since my first year of school, like with, you know, anatomy course and, you know, the such where it really is overwhelming, is right. taking the time to um, do things that I'm very passionate about outside of school. So I always made the time to like go work out because I figured um, that if I made it a habit of, uh, which I write about a lot, if I made it a habit of pushing to the side, you know, oh, after I'm done with this exam, then I'll work out, you know, or after I'm done with the exam, then I'll go dance with friends at, you know, whatever class or whatever club or wherever. Um, then that would become a habit of like, okay, mm -hmm. when I become a second year and I have a test like every week, for example, then I'm never gonna do that until I'm done with second year. And then once I go into clinics, I'm never gonna do that until I graduate. Um, and then once I start practicing, I'm never gonna do that until I'm retired. So, you know, it, I really try to focus on um, making it a priority to keep one or two things that I find very important to me that really only take an hour a day, mm -hmm. um, you know, to be like, I am going to stick to this. Um, I like and that. I'm not going to let something get in the way because I'm more than just a vet student or more than just a vet. That's exactly right. And you make it a priority, not ancillary. And right. so it's on your to-do list, just like it is with studying for an exam. Or, exactly. Uh, cause it, it, because that's how you can not be, you, you get a little off center if that's if that happens. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so I got to ask you then, so you like yeah. to dance. What, so if you had to meet a um, an artist that would, you know, if I could get you an artist right now, who would be the one that you would like have to see or hang out with or whatever? I I love Lady Gaga. I would love to. Oh my Gaga. <laughs> yeah. Are I, you one of her little monsters? Oh, of course. Oh, 100%. I would love to. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> that would be is. amazing. Yeah. You know, she was supposed to be at Coachella, by the way. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's actually coming to, or well, was supposed to be coming to Massachusetts, to Boston, on her very limited tour, um, this upcoming Chromatica tour. Um, don't know if that's happening, but also I'm scheduled to be on vacation in uh, Delaware at that time, so I was really uh, bummed out that I wouldn't have even made it, right, even right. if it was still scheduled. But I did really want to see her uh, residency in Vegas, but I have not seen it. No, and so what about, uh, and tell us about your girlfriend too, because she's working yeah. for yes. care. So she's a, she's a nurse um, down in Virginia. Um, she's in labor and delivery. Um, and, um, but, you know, she definitely, all the healthcare professionals, they've been doing a great job with this and they've all been really feeling it and, you know, feeling the like impact, but they 
you know, are doing such a great job at really trying to stay sterile when they need to stay sterile, sure. um, you know, trying to emphasize like social distancing, you know, um, so yeah, it, it's been hard. What do you guys do to stay connected? Cause yeah, know, so not easy. So. Oh, for sure. So one thing that, that we kind of, um, have going for us is that we are in a long distance relationship because she has been in Virginia. We, we've been dating for almost two years now. Um, and she's been in Virginia the whole time and I've been up in mass for most of the time, um, except for the summers. Um, and so we're used to being long distance. So we FaceTime and we talk on the phone. Um, we'll text a lot. Um, but um, being a nurse, I've also gotten used to the the fact that I don't hear from her a lot during the day because she's working and you know she's not like sitting in an office so she doesn't have access to her phone so I I'd say we've been pretty set up well for this whole situation but um we've also gone like biking um where we don't touch and the bikes make us stay like six feet apart if not more because yeah. otherwise you're gonna crash uh -huh. um and so it's been a nice way to like be in person um, without like really right. interacting. Um, so it's been, it's been hard, but, um, we're making it through pretty well. I'd yeah, say. Yeah, that's really good. It's so yeah. nice to hear that you're, you, you sound like you're so grounded with everything that you're doing and amongst all the chaos of the, of the Corona that's happening. And this is why I always like to share your story with other students and other veterinary healthcare professionals, because, um, you really set the bar very nice for um, a little bit of this with a little bit of that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I definitely try to do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I know you have studying to do and everything. Yeah, definitely. And, but those of you that are watching, stay tuned because Harris is going to be writing some articles for us for DVM 360 and he'll be making yep. some occasional appearances down the road with our family. <laughs> so yes. uh, best of luck with school everything that you're doing we're so proud of you and i can't wait to call you a colleague in just two short years yes thank you so much thanks for uh, having me absolutely my pleasure and thank you everybody for tuning in here at dbm 360 mjh life sciences and we'll see you next time